How's that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, you know, the great thing is, ich, das, das Schöne ist, ich habe überhaupt keine Vorbereitungszeit gehabt. Ich habe heute Morgen ja schon gesagt, ich habe äh, viel zu tun, aber wenn man so einen hier hat, muss man halt auch mal zugreifen. What do you think about that? You know, that's, that's funny. You know, you know the movie Lost in Translation? <laughs> Yes, I've you know heard when about that. You know when he's shooting the commercial <laughs> and the director is yelling for about two minutes nonstop? Yeah, yeah. And the woman translates and she says, he said more intensity. He's like, is that all he said? <laughs> is that it? You sure? But what, what do you, um, so help us out a little bit and ex explain to us, uh, you know, you deal a lot with big data. When you say you deal a lot with big data in the investment world, how would you explain that to a retail investor? Wie, wie würde man das einem... Yeah. Privatanleger erklären, was er hier im Prinzip macht. Yeah, you have to think about it this way. I think it's 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 simple to say in in one respect, which is we all know that information moves markets. That's from the beginning, right? You can go all the way back. Uh, what we look to do is is that some of the data that we have isn't so easy to use uh, to trade with. So we help people figure out, or firms or investors figure out, how to structure the data and, and use it in a way that they can do analysis with that. Also in einer Worten, es gibt wahnsinnig viele Daten, die nicht strukturiert sind, und er hilft, diese Daten zu strukturieren. So in other words, could one say that yes, there are tons of data out there. They are very valuable, but they're very unstructured. Mm -hmm. So you specialized on structuring those data. Um, There was a great question that was um, um, that you guys put out in the prior conversations we had. It was like, well, you have to ask the right question. Man muss die erste, also das ist so diese Analogie, wenn du vorne Müll eingibst, kommt hinten Müll raus. Und äh, die entscheidende Frage ist äh, in Sachen auch Big Data und Datenstrukturierung ist immer die, Fra die richtige Frage zu stellen. Um, how do you do that? You know, that, that is, <coughs> that's, that's the art, right? That's what analysts do well. That's what portfolio managers do really well. So, or, or anybody who's going to make an investment, they do well. They ask themselves a question. Why, why would a company do this? Or how can I look at a company in a certain way? And if I can look at a company, that, is there data available to help me answer that question? So what, what kind of data would you be looking at, just as an example? Yeah, Phone so data, satellite data, what kind of data would so you be looking at? Let's just take it from the easiest thing, and, and this is how a question would work. Let's say you knew that uh, you, know, you wanted to look at revenues of a company and you wanted to understand, could I predict those revenues? Most, most of the time what happens with financial data is that it, it's what we call backward looking, which means you probably have four months until you get the previous quarter uh, in front of you, right? And when the data comes out, it's probably about a month or two offset from when the quarter closes. Mm -hmm. Imagine if I could give you data in real time every day, right? That actually was very predictive of what was going to happen four months ago when it gets announced this month. Mm, that's, that's great, that's total spannend. Also es, im Prinzip geht es darum, dass wir in der Finanzwelt ja oft eigentlich nach hinten schauen. Ne? Was war damals? Wie war das letzte Quartal? Wie, ist das, wie sind die Umsätze ausgefallen? Aber man muss sich vorstellen, dass man quasi in real time diese Fragen be 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 beantworten können. So how do you do this technically speaking? Let, let's, let's stick with the revenue question, right? right? right. You want to have a, a, a now cast kind of model that's of, exactly let's it. say Walmart or McDonald's or whatever. That's it. You know, I was just about to say that word because that's the word that's come into, into basically economic culture, right, is now casting. So for example, let's say you have a vendor and you can get, you know, a, a good large set of credit card receipts Uh, you know, that, that you know uh, maybe for the United States or you get it with for the EU. And you notice is that for certain uh, merchants in there, right, like direct online sales, right? So for example, you know that I can buy from the Apple store. Well, I could take a look to see is that on a regular basis with consistent users, and that's the hard part is understanding what we call a, a stationary metric. So at least the, the same transactions in aggregate from the same type of people And I could see how predictive that is of, you know, something like EPS, you know, earnings or revenues or sales. And I can go back then and then chart the two. So what so I do is I structure the data to be able to chart those two. So you structure the data. Now, how would that technically lo look for, like, let's say a portfolio manager? Is it, are the, da the data that you're creating, are those data that basically help to... To, uh, in addition to an investment case that they're making, or will they base their investment decision on, on, on data you'll provide? I, or both? Uh, both. There's a, there's a lot that goes into input to making any investment decision. It's never... It's, it's never one item. You mean right? it's not Jim Cramer saying, like, you know, you, uh, should, you should buy <laughs> Boeing now? <laughs> I don't know. If, I don't know. I think there was a portfolio a couple of years ago that used to actually uh, add those up and look at it. I think it was actually the contrary indicator. We'll talk about that another time. <laughs> but, but it, you know, there... 
you know, if you think about the two shifts that are here, right, is that there's uh, discretionary investing, which we, we think about as the traditional, you know, analysts who are reading things all day long, and quantitative investing, which is starting with data and looking for signals to trade and not really caring about the industry itself so much, is on that other side, on, on what you're saying in this case, is there's a lot of things that go into the decision. It could yeah. be is like I I used to be an analyst who actually worked in that industry. I know everything about the producers in that industry. I'm finding data to help me figure out something I wish I would have known. Yeah. Right. That that's the and it's one piece of a mosaic as it usually is called. Also was was uns natürlich interessiert uh, Bart, if you could hand me my laptop for a quick second. Was uns natürlich am meisten interessiert oder mich auch interessiert ist um, die, dieses ganze Universum in der institutionellen Welt. Kommt das eigentlich auch irgendwann in unsere Welt rein, in die Welt der Privatanleger? So uh, we're talking ab about uh, a lot of big data um, uh, in, in, and uh, machine learning in the institutional world. What do you see happening in the retail world? Is that transitioning into the retail world or the retail world so far away that... It, it, yeah, it, it's, not, it's not far away. I think it, what I think is really funny is I spent time looking at uh, machine learning hedge funds, right, yeah. or AI-based hedge funds, right? And, and what you can find from that is uh, there's a lot less people who do it really well, right? So just giving you, at the top of the game, there's a lot of people who are, who are trying to do it and there's a few of them who do it well. If we take this onto the retail side, nobody really in retail outside of maybe tools for portfolio optimization or something like that is really using a lot of AI techniques or machine learning, right? Mm -hmm. That's going to come, it'll come. What's happening in that is a communication world and revolution is that what I'm watching is retail investors have so much more at their disposal to find out information and to gain information, whether it's Twitter or stock twits or something like that in the U.S. or, you know, chat groups or message boards or all. Well, it's amazing, right? Because the learning curve for an investor, I think, has just absolutely dropped. Is you can get expertise pretty much at your fingertips from so many different places, and that helps the investing side. How is that going to change the way? Now you you are in this universe. You've been in this universe a long time. You've seen pretty much everything on Wall Street. Hopefully, not everything, but a lot on Wall Street. <laughs> wow. <laughs> About so, if you really look into the future, right? What will investing look like, like 10, 15 years ago? You know, the way, you know, sometimes to me when you, I look at um, financial reporting, right, it feels really like it's been done like that 30 years ago. What will it look like 30 years in, in, in the future? I, I think I'll grab my phone and I'll say, Siri, make me money. Is that, <laughs> is that I'm going to do it? That's, that's what I'm going to do probably, right, in 15 years from so now. Oh, seriously, what, what, what is it going to look like? What do you I, think? How, how will it change? Because it seems to me that retail investing, the way retail investors act, have not really changed that dramatically over the last couple of years. No, it's more democratized, right? Uh, you can do ETFs, you can do all kinds of you, different you stuff. You can, but you know the, the difference is is that is and it's it's a lot to be said, and maybe maybe in other places you're not seeing it is that the amount of communication that goes on with investors, right? So what I used to be able to see and be a part of on the trading floor yes. is as part of a community on a trading floor is that you always knew what was going on because of what desk you were at or where you worked or how the chatter is. That element of a trading floor is great as the chatter. That is, transfor that is transforming to me is what's happening in retail. Is people are being able to talk to each other and create groups of uh, basically investors and exchanging information with each other. Yeah, it's yeah. like, hey, I know nothing about you know, uh, you know, semiconductors. What can you tell me about the semiconductor? There are plenty of people who can tell you, right? There are localized experts who you're not paying money for who can tell you that. And you can already see that, you know, uh, in, in, in our world, right? I mean, like, so if I would have thought that we have, I, I have close to 60,000 followers now cl cl across the platform, and you have the possibility of really, you know, exchanging ideas, and it's not a one-way road anymore, no. whereas in TV it's a one-way road, and here you really have the possibility of having a conversation. Uh, let, me, let me give you an ex instance. So my, my son is, is 21. Yeah. He's going to graduate college. He yeah. likes to invest. Yes. Is I get investing ideas from my son. He'll, he'll say, is, hey, Dad, I was looking at this. You know, here's what I think. Here's how I think sales and revenue are going to go, and here's why I think. And I said, where'd you get that? He goes, well, I read this blog post. I talked to these three people on stock twits, right? And you know what? I did my own research, and I kind of did a back of the envelope, and here's what I think they're going to do, okay? The kid's not an analyst, 
right? He's pretty smart to be able to do that, but he's getting the benefit of standing on the shoulders of other people who have published stuff that's out there that's freely available. So um, let me ask you, uh, what are the next steps for you? You're going to Hong Kong soon, Battle of the Quans. We had Bar Kellerman here, he's actually standing right here. For a change, he's not the star of the show, you know? <laughs> you're the star of the show, he's the one doing the switching. Um, but uh, so you're heading to Hong Kong. What are, you, wha uh, wha what are you doing down there? So in Hong Kong, we're talking a little bit more about uh, about the effects of, of what we can see in trying to find data within social media, within Chinese, with Chinese social media, and looking at how that affects sort of uh, consumer products and brands and how that actually impacts companies. So we're looking at that. We're going to present a white paper, right? So we're, we're working with two other partners in this case that we have. Uh, one is a company called IQ Banker, who does supply chain information. Uh, another one is called Calculated Systems, who works on message processing. So that means it takes the data and helps us format and structure it for what we want to do in finance. And we're releasing a joint white paper to do that. And that's part of a series that we're doing at Battle as well as with some uh, institutional clients. Well, I mean, I really appreciate you coming in. Uh, we can talk about this a long, long time. Uh, one thing that I really enjoy the most about uh, you and about uh, Bart is uh, you really need to see both sides of the aisle. You know, I think uh, a lot of investors, especially retail investors, viele Privatanleger sind so fokussiert auf die alte Art und Weise, wie man im Prinzip Geld anlegt, dass man fast nicht mitbekommt, was sich eigentlich in Sachen Zukunft äh, tut. Also gerade die Verwendung von Daten und Machine Learning ist hoch faszinierend und verändert die Investmentwelt wirklich auch dramatisch. One more question to you, I mean, and I think if that could be our, our final question. Um, you say yourself that, you know, so there are many out there that, can, that do, you know, an okay job, <coughs> a few do a mediocre job, and a few do a fantastic job. Um, what would your typical client look like? Who, who would your typical client be, to explain that to, to, to our audience? And um, how many of those, <laughs> I know you can't answer this question. Um, I'm just curious when you um, when you look at the the financial industry, how many how how is the financial how 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 is the financial oh my God sometimes English is a difficult language. <laughs> the so question the question to me is um, the question to me is look so there are so many financial services companies out there many mutual funds ETF firms hedge funds equity you know all these things how many of those are really gearing up to use big data and machine learning I think I think they all are and they, they all have to are because that is the in one way or another, that is the changing face of this business. This business has become now a data-centric and data-driven business. And if, uh, you're, if you don't focus on that and you don't implement that as an investment house? It, it's, it's, not, it's not a matter of I don't. It's like if that's something I'm not today making an investment in and taking a look at and making an evaluation, is I will, I will not be in the race, right? I cannot compete. Uh, and it, it just, it's just, it's just a, an easy thing to say, and, and you see it, is that you see firms who are not making investments because others are, right, and they're taking a risk because in my, in my book, you need to evaluate data, right? There are so many sources. I mean, look, we, we were laughing about this before, right, but, you know, J.P. Morgan wrote a piece, you know, on, you know, Trump tweeting, right, and they put together the, uh, the Valfefe in, index, mm -hmm. right? And, but you can see it in you know, certain movements is that when you know, the President of the United States says something and tweets, you know, it affects a market, right? This was in the past, right? It's like all news affects a market. So that just one little piece right there, even if you're not you know, a little bit cognizant of that as an investor and as an institution about that data, it's like you're, you're, not, being a, you know, you're not being a good uh, asset manager for all your customers, right? And I think one really also has to realize, especially when you don't deal with this world on a, on a daily basis, that this is nothing that just happened, you know, no, nobody threw the light switch. Nah. This is a process that happened a long time ago and will still continue a long time, right? Yeah. How far in are we in, in regards to big data, machine learning, and, and, and getting data structures that are becoming more reliable and less noisy? I, I, I know, as I was talking about this with our mutual friend Bart, and you know, I, we realized that we, we've known each other for 15 years. And 15 years ago when I started this, I thought, man, we were late. We're late, it's fi you know? And here we are, I'm finding out is, you know, just with uh, hindsight now and looking is like, this is just a process. This is still early. This is early. This is not mature. This is not mature at all. So let me ask you a question. So we had this whole topic of uh, speed in trading, right? Eventually everybody, you know, got faster, 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 and, and it's getting more and more expensive to get those data. And eventually, you know, everybody has access to the same speed, and then it, 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 you lose your edge. 
um, to a certain degree, right? Is that the same path we're on in big data that, you know, there's still this rat race of who's going to be the first and who's structuring it right and who's asking the right question? And event will eventually everybody be asking the same question and the attractiveness of it G loses given out? I think, I think given the size and the amount of data and how companies work and some of the approaches and the strategy and the horizons, that's the difference. When you're a speed trader, there's only one horizon, right? It's the information in the time of that trade, right? Yeah. A lot of those trades are made. Is right When you're not a speed trader, Okay, and the, in that case, is that there are many ways to win. I don't think I think Warren Buffett doesn't use big, big data, right? I doubt it. <laughs> in his own way, he may have different data that he gets, right? Because he's able to do most of his calculations on a, on the back of a you know a napkin to figure out about market sizing. And what so we think the doing. reality, of course, is probably different, right? Yeah. He's probably all plugged in, you know. It's I don't like think so. I think he's just like putting on a show, playing his little ukulele, and uh, in the back room, he's I, sitting I, there I, going I, like, I, "Well, fuck you guys. We're gonna, you know, I'm way ahead of you guys." I, I think <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty good to see Warren do that with a ukulele and a, and a cheeseburger and a, and a Coke. All right. but, I, but I think back to this point is, is that if, if, you, if you look at with data and how you think about approaching investing, there are many different ways to, to win that game. The game could be played on different horizons, and that's, that's, the, that's the joy of this. Hallelujah and amen. You know, thank you so much for coming Street in. To be um, here. And um, uh, we, I'm going to post the, Engl uh, the English language live stream. We have vorher noch einen Stream gemacht mit Bart Kellerman zusammen in English für Battle of the Quants. Halbe Stunde lang, uh, wer da wirklich mal intensiver reintauchen will. Hier war das jetzt ein bisschen improvisiert. Ich hoffe, es hat euch trotzdem Spaß gemacht. Und uh, ich wünsche euch einen schönen Handelstag. Und wir sehen uns morgen wieder. Bis dann. Ciao. <lacht>